As always, I count it a great privilege to be before you once more. I do count it a joy to be able to stand before you and deliver at least what I would consider a sermon. Now, I think we all could agree and would agree that the world around us is increasingly more and more against biblical principles and just as militant against those who would preach them, who would dare attempt to proclaim those principles. Now, I've not been here very long on this planet, but even in my own lifetime, I've seen those changes take place, especially regarding biblical morals, how we as a country, how we even as a church have departed from them. As Americans, as a country, we are mainly focused on material wealth and our physical prosperity rather than on our spiritual health and our heavenly treasure. Now the Christian as our New Testaments would point out and use that term, the Christian cannot succumb to these worldly lusts if he or she desires to indeed remain faithful to God. But you see, this has not ever, nor will ever, stop our adversary, that is, the devil, from attempting to persuade each and every one of us to fall. Now this morning I would like to take a little bit of a different approach in presenting this lesson. But under the heading of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11, I would like for us to consider this morning several different successes and even methods taken by and from the perspective of Satan himself. If I were the devil. Now, I didn't know about the song we were going to sing prior to this lesson, but if I were the devil, I would try to convince you to completely disregard the words of the song you just sang. For it outlines how to be faithful to God and thus resisting Satan. If I were the devil... I would cheer on the multitudes who would work so feverishly as my agents to help others forfeit any and all effort to resist my threats. You see, as the devil, as the adversary, I began my work back in the Garden of Eden with the first human family there in Genesis chapter 3. You see, I sought to destroy mankind at the very, in the very beginning. I did this by attempting to change the will of Jehovah. I added one little word into his command. I was successful. For I was able to deceive the woman, later known as Eve. Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. And as, as I predicted, the man, Adam... Followed her around, followed her lead, and partook of that forbidden fruit. And in that moment of weakness with that first family, I was able to taint all of creation with sin and thus death. But I didn't stop there. My work continues today. My tactics have not changed. My agents call to those who would be named as Christians. They need not resist me. After all, the pleasure of sin only lasts for a season. So just sin more frequently and enjoy those pleasures more often. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 25. You see, as Satan, I rejoice in knowing that my house in hell will be full. I am able to share in my eternal misery with all those poor lost souls. 
Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Secondly, I would rejoice if I was the devil. I would rejoice in the fact that I have been able to corrupt the children and grandchildren of those who once stood for and vehemently held to biblical teachings. Throughout patriarchy, I was able to turn the ears and hearts away from Jehovah God. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32. Each tribe and eventually each nation waxed more rebellious to Jehovah's will. Thus I was successful in my task. Just as in the Mosaic Law period, or even when that period was being implemented, the law was being brought to mankind, specifically the house of Israel, my influence worked on the family of the prince Jacob. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. You see, in the wilderness wanderings, many stood for my cause. Well, this evidently angered Jehovah and ultimately brought his wrath upon them. He would have called it disobedience. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Colossians chapter 3, verse 6. My work continues. Shortly after the church that Jesus built, apostasy, apostasy occurred. From this dark cloud of error came the Roman Catholic Church. They have done so much good work for my cause over the years. Their doctrines, their principles, their traditions captivate the weak minds and superstitions of men. They even spearheaded the denominational movement. More importantly, they were partially responsible for modern day secular humanism. You see, they helped perpetuate the idea that there is no absolute truth. You cannot find it. If you cannot find it, it cannot be believed. And if it cannot be believed, it cannot be obeyed. Thus, it cannot be taught. Third, if I were the devil, I would be impressed with my accomplishments regarding the highest seat of power in really any nation. We have seen in recent history where people in power are not held to the same standard of conduct as the common folk. The world saw the conclusion and is still seeing the conclusion of the court case known as Roe versus Wade. You see, I rejoice in the fact that now these mothers can legally murder their children. After all, this is a right extended to them by their government. You know, this calls to mind the glory days of old, where even the children of Israel caused their children to pass through the fire and offerings to Molech. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 35. You see, people haven't changed. I rejoice in that fact as well. The world saw former President Clinton perjuring himself. You see, he was deceitful regarding his relationships with Monica Lewinsky. And he was later acquitted of all charges thanks to those who remained in power. And he himself, as a result of that, remained in power. The current regime continues to make such threats and even promote violence and debauchery. You see, the leaders of any people, great or small, all influence their citizens, and it can be done for evil. This was true of the sons of Eli, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 24. This was true with Jeroboam as king, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 30. We even saw it with Pilate, who allowed the murder of an innocent man, Matthew chapter 27, verse 24. 
I will not stop until all call evil good. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Fourth, if I were the devil, I would keep the great liberal digression aflame by multiplying the false teachers as well as the, ter the churches and those so-called Christian schools that produce such characters. I would keep that fire stoked. You see, I know exactly where that starts. So I would attempt to keep those parents ignorant as much as possible. You see, ignorance about school cu curriculum ensures continued admittance to these, these schools. Such schools as Southwest School of Preaching, Abilene Christian University, Memphis School of Preaching, and countless others. After all, as parents, you must keep in mind that these secular schools are still teaching your children immorality. You see, ignorant parents will not hold to a pattern of living or promote that pattern. They will not hold to a pattern of sound living or soundness in really any other aspect of their lives. Exodus chapter 25 verse 40, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13, Titus chapter 2 verse 7, and Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. Ignorant parents allow themselves and their children to hear false teachers. Matthew chapter 7 verse 50. Excuse me, verse 15. You see, ignorant parents extend fellowship to those they shouldn't. They would listen to these false teachers, and they would eventually practice their teachings. Ignorant parents are oblivious to the fact that false doctrine will send one to hell just as quickly as the sin of drunkenness and fornication. Fifth, if I were the devil, I would attempt to keep the anti-movements alive and busy in sowing their wonderful discord. What could be more deceptive than those that would argue for biblical authority, but then teach and bind laws on the church as doctrines of men? You see, the Pharisees of old fell into this trap. Matthew chapter 15, verse 9. Mark chapter 7, verse 7. No matter the outcome, I win souls. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 15 reads, He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. Sixth, if I were the devil, I would do my very best to disrupt relationships between those who would uphold doctrinal lines and are currently doing their best to please Jehovah God. I would continue to attempt to play brother against brother. Acts chapter 20 verse 30. I would encourage these brethren to bite and devour one another. Galatians chapter 5 verse 5. I would divide and subdivide each of these brethren to cause many schisms. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. And I dare say so myself, I've done good a job at that. In so doing and creating these schisms, each of these divided brethren, these separated brethren would feel more and more like they're less important than the other members. Thus they would cause themselves to become weak and eventually seek out other men to follow rather than their precious Savior and the, and the truth that is contained in His will. I would seek to give these less important members the confidence they need to act contrary to biblical love and to even question those who would attempt to act in biblical love, to question the motives of others. 
1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Seventh, if I were the devil, I would do my very best to convince brethren that they do not have to regularly attend the assemblies of worship with faithful brethren. I would work to convince them that they already have what is necessary to remain faithful to Jehovah. After all, can they not study their own Bibles in their own homes from the comfort of their own easy chairs, their couches, their love seats, their sofas? Well, why not even make it their bed? That way they wouldn't have to get up. Could they not be examples, good examples to those around them throughout the week? Why focus on one day? You see, I would work to make them ignore such passages as Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, and 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And I would attempt to make sure they never heard the example given of old, where a preacher once went to a, a forsaking member's house, never said a word to this member. This was pretty cold weather at the time. You see, the preacher came in, was offered a seat by the fire. That preacher took a coal from that fire and set it on the floor. It was a dirt floor. And as they sat and watched the fire, eventually that one coal burned out. Again, that preacher never said a word. But once that coal burned out, he promptly stood up and went towards the door. And that member thanked him for his lesson. You see, I want, make, I want to make sure that these members forget the fact that they don't need to be around faithful brethren to encourage themselves and encourage their brethren to remain faithful. After all, I want their soul. I would work to make sure that the caliber of people as depicted in this illustration would not ever attempt to reach out to these erring members. And I would work to help these erring members to go farther down the path of searing their conscience with a hot iron. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Furthermore, I would attempt to make these members be more comfortable outside of worship and away from faithful brethren and be more comfortable at home. Perhaps a ball field with a bunch of heathens. Eighth, if I were the devil, there would be no limit to the fun I would be having. But I would not be resting on my laurels. I have enough sense to understand that any significant and long-lasting victory requires vigilance. You see, I am the God of this world. As such, I must keep this key fact from those who are now ignorant. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. I live to snuff out light. Therefore, I must strive to keep men blind to that light of the gospel that would save them. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 9. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. I am that great deceiver. As I continue on having my fun, I would also attack and attempt to destroy the individual churches of Christ, those congregations that would attempt to be faithful. While it is a great thing for me to have all these lost souls of men, spending all my time on them is futile because they're already my group of companions. They're already lost. Instead, I must devote my efforts, my focus on stealing the souls of the saved. This will be done by actively pursuing them 
just as a lion stalks her prey. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. For I am a ravenous lion. I am hungry. I wish to devour the souls of men, especially those who would attempt to be faithful to Jehovah God. If I were the devil, I would count myself a glowing success, an undeniable, phenomenal, and ever-expanding influence. As I look out in the fields of the declining moral standards throughout not just the country of the United States of America, but at the world at large, I rejoice in my conquests, for I have been successful in many ways. But I will continue in my mission, keeping those ignorant that they may be said of them. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. I rejoice in that fact as Satan. While all of these things are at play now, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. Right? 2 Tim, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Now everyone is ignorant of something. That alone is not a problem. That ignorance, though, can change. Now regarding spiritual matters, our ignorance is expected to change. In fact, it is, is it expected of us to decline. Though we do have an adversary, and that is Satan, the devil, we have not been left alone to deal with him. In fact, we are promised by God through James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We're given the key to this passage earlier in the book, James chapter 1, verse 25. But whoso looketh in the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now this morning we would ask, have you already submitted your will to the fathers? If so, continue in that perfect law of liberty and remain a doer of the work. Now if you have not submitted to Jehovah's will, why not? Satan already has you in his clutches. However, you can escape from those clutches by obeying the saving gospel of Jesus Christ, our Savior. On the other hand, if you are in fact already a child of God, yet through weakness of the flesh have allowed sin back into your life, why not obey the gospel, what we typically call the second law of pardon? Repent of your sin, confess it, and we'll pray for you. And you'll be cleansed of that sin. You'll contact the blood of Christ once more by following that command. You see, if I were the devil, I wouldn't have said any of these things. Nonetheless, each of these different aspects are real. They're issues that we must deal with as individual members and certainly as a collective body in here in spring just as every faithful congregation must deal with so if there is any need whether to put on Christ in baptism or if there is sin in your life as an erring child of God please make the necessary corrections this morning as together we stand and sing <laughs>